All right, welcome back. In this video, just going over quickly how to calculate angular speed, which is sometimes referred to as angular velocity or even angular frequency. So um, to get started, let's write out what we got. Oh, that's green. Let's maybe change that color. Angular speed. So just like that. Uh, the, the, the variable that we use for angular speed is omega. Um, this units for omega should always be in radians per second, okay? Always put them in radians per second. Otherwise, when you get into the, the equations that I'm going to show you later, it's not going to work. They're designed to work with radians per second. But the angular speed is basically the rate at which your angular displacement is changing. So let's actually draw us out a circle here. If you imagine that we have some disk that's rotating, I don't know, something like that. Then theta here is what we call angular displacement, which is basically how many revolutions or how many radians or degrees this thing has rotated through. It could be more than one revolution or it could be a partial revolution. So that's angular displacement. Angular speed is the rate at which angular displacement is changing. And the most basic way that we can write it is, uh, or express it, is 2 pi times the frequency. So frequency, if you don't remember, is expressed in hertz. And 1 hertz is equal to 1 cycle per second. So really when you look at this expression, you see this 2 pi in here. All that's doing is converting from cycles per second into radians per second. Because uh, if we have, say, one revolution, and we want to convert that to radians, we would apply our factor of one revolution per two pi radians, and that would give us, basically, those would cancel out, and we would be left with two pi radians. So that's all that this is, that's all that's going on here is, uh, this converts a uh, frequency from hertz into radians per second. So you might also hear angular speed referred to as angular frequency, which would be in terms of cycles per second, and you also might hear it referred to as angular velocity. And, and obviously the difference between speed and velocity is velocity is a vector quantity, so we would just indicate the direction, whether counterclockwise or clockwise, and it's the same as statics and moments. You know, basically use the right hand rule. So you would make your hand into your right hand into a fist and put it basically on top of your screen like this. Your fingers would be curling around this way. Your four fingers and your thumb would be pointing straight out of the screen right here. Um, the coming out of the screen would technically give you your vector direction based on this rotational um, sense. Uh, very similar to moments in statics. So just to make sure you remember to use the right hand rule if uh, if you're dealing with angular velocity instead of angular speed. But often you can just write the sense, like uh, you can draw that or that, and that's a pretty good indication to your professor that you know what's going on. So anyways, um, if our angular speed is changing, uh, basically we can, uh, we can define an average angular speed. So we would have omega average. And that is really just equal to, you take the average of the values, so the initial plus the final divided by two. Should be pretty straightforward. It's like taking the average of any two numbers. And then the other two equations uh, that really omega is going to pop up very obviously in, it pops up in a bunch, but I should probably mention these two right now, that we have uh, omega f, so the final angular speed, is equal to the initial plus alpha t, alpha being the angular acceleration. And this other guy here, we have uh, omega f squared is equal to omega i squared plus two alpha theta. So these are exactly synonymous to the linear versions, like there's linear versions of these expressions. If you just substitute um, theta for s and uh, omega for v and alpha for a, you'll find these are actually the exact same form as the kinematic equations for linear motion problems. And uh, I did make a video deriving those uh, and I think I'm gonna make a video just to be super clear deriving these ones as well even though it's exactly the same process just changing basically the names of the variables but I should probably do that so that'll be a few videos down in the playlist and then also we'll be uh, comparing 
uh, you know, just all of the linear kinematic equations to all of their angular counterparts. So anyways, um, that pretty much is a good introduction, I'd say, to angular speed. Um, join me in the next video, and we'll go over a quick introduction to angular acceleration before we actually go and start deriving all of these things.